What's going on everyone? Welcome back. Patrick here. In this video, we got to find the domain of these three functions here. And notice that all three of these functions contain expressions with ln. And in the previous video, I did a bunch of functions with ln as well. And I recommend you watch that video first before watching this one because I talk about how to deal with ln in a little bit more detail in that video. And these functions are gonna be a little bit more complex than the ones before. So I highly recommend you watch that video, the video before this one on the site, before watching this one. But assuming you did watch that video, this first function we got ln of ln of x squared minus three. So as I mentioned, whenever you have ln of some kind of expression, you got to make sure that that expression is going to be greater than zero because you can't ln zero, you can't ln a negative number. So we got to figure out when is ln of x squared minus three going to be greater than zero? When is this expression inside the bracket going to be greater than zero? And if you remember, we used a property in the previous video whenever we have ln of some kind of expression is greater than let's say a constant could be even another expression here but we're just dealing with a constant zero whenever you have this inequality this could also be less than then to isolate for this expression you would just take that other side as a base e to the power of that constant and again this could be less than as well right so from here to here. And that's what we're going to have to do here because remember with an inequality what we want to do is we want to isolate for that x value there. So applying that we'll have x squared minus 3. This expression has to be greater than e to the power of 0. So x squared minus 3 has to be greater than 1, right? e to the power of 0. Anything to the power of 0 is just 1. So now we've got to solve this inequality. And different ways to do it, what I would do is I'd bring the one over, so we'd have x squared, negative three minus one, change of sign, so we'll have x squared minus four. When's x squared minus four gonna be greater than zero? That's just a quadratic that is opening up because it has a positive a value and it has intercepts at negative two and positive 2. So if we take x squared minus 4 and factor it, we got a difference of squares like that. So graphing this, it's going to look like that. So when is this quadratic going to be greater than 0? Well, it's going to be greater than 0 here. It's going to be greater than 0 there. So basically when x is less than negative 2, right here, it's gonna be this area, and then when x is greater than two, it's gonna be that area. And that ends up being <clears throat> the domain for, um, for this function here, okay? And you could test it. So we can, um, maybe we could try some x values between negative two and positive two. So what if we try zero? Well, if we plug in zero over here, notice we'll have zero minus three, which is negative, but we can't ln a negative number, right? So you could just test a bunch of values. Then you could test some values that would work. So an x value greater than two. So for example, let's say that we plug in, um, let's say we plug in three over here. So we'll have three squared, which is nine minus three, which is six, ln of six, is going to give us some kind of positive value and then ln of a positive value, we can get a value for that, All right? So putting the domain in a nicer format here, we'll have the domain xer, x has to be less than negative two or x has to be greater than positive two. And if we show this in another notation, so if x is less than negative 2, it means x can be from negative infinity to negative 2. Circle bracket, not inclusive of that negative 2. Because if you do plug in negative 2 or positive 2, what's going to happen? We'll have 2 squared 
or negative 2 squared, which is 4, minus 3, which is 1. Then we'll have ln of 1, which is 0, but then we can take ln of 0. That's why it's not inclusive of that negative 2 and positive 2. So from negative infinity to negative 2, and then also from 2 to positive infinity. Right? So that's the domain for this function right here. Now, number 2, we got f of x equals the square root of x minus 1 over ln of x minus 3. Now, this one is pretty tricky. So you got to work it in increments because notice we're going to have a bunch of restrictions on this ln here and then on this square root of x minus 1. But there's actually one restriction that's going to be very subtle. and I'm going to mention it at the end. But for now, let's just work with what is obvious to us. So definitely x minus 1 has to be greater than or equal to 0, right? Because we can't square root a negative number. So from here, we could tell all the x values have to be greater than or equal to 1. So that's a restriction on x for sure. Any x values less than 1 would make this expression negative, can't square root a negative. So that's one thing. Also notice we have ln of an expression. So that expression has to be greater than 0. Not greater than or equal to 0, just greater than 0. So notice that x has to be greater than 3 from this here. So it can't equal 3 because notice if it equals 3, we'd have 3 minus 3 and you can't ln a 0. So notice that if we combine these, we can just forget about this one because this one is more restrictive. All the x values have to be greater than 3, which by logic would include all the x values greater than or equal to 1. And notice that we can't use this one as being more restrictive than this because let's say we plugged in an x value of 2, which is greater than or equal to 1. It would make this square root, uh, it would make this expression positive. It would just be 1 and the square root of 1 is 1. But notice that if we plug in 2 here, we'll have 2 minus 3, which is negative 1. Can't ln a negative number. All right, so just an example of where this is more restrictive than this. So we can kind of forget about that. So all the x values have to be greater than 3. Now, are we done here? No, we're not. Because we're dealing with a rational function. And for a rational function, you always have to make sure that that denominator does not equal 0. And so this is that other subtle restriction. So what we have to make sure is that this ln of x minus 3 does not equal 0. That entire expression in the denominator. So notice here, we could apply that same rule. If we want to isolate for this expression, we would take e to the power of whatever's here. It's 0 in this case. So x minus 3 cannot equal 1 e to the power of 0 is 1, which means x cannot equal 4 if we bring that negative 3 over. So that there is another restriction. And that's the subtle restriction that I was talking about. So it wouldn't just be this. You also have to do this step. right? So notice the x values have to be greater than 3, but x also can't equal 4. So just be careful with that because you could plug it in. If we plug in 4 here, we'll have 4 minus 3, which is 1. Ln of 1 is 0, but you can't take something and divide it by 0. That's why that x value can't equal 4. And so if we write these restrictions in a nicer format, we'll have the domain. x can be anything. As long as uh, x is greater than 3 and x does not equal 4. And if you were to write it in this format, the way it would be is uh, x would be an element from 3 to 4 and then from 4 to positive infinity. Right, because it's going from 3 to positive infinity, but we have to have that break at 4. 
And so notice it's a circle bracket at this four and then at that four it means it's not including the four. So any values from three to four, not inclusive of the three. So from three to four and then from four to infinity. So notice that this x minus one here was pretty much irrelevant, that restriction that x has to be greater than or equal to one because that is already taken care of in these more restrictive uh, parts of the domain. But if this was, uh, let's say, square root of x minus six, okay, then it changes everything because then x would have to be greater than or equal to six. And then notice that the domain would just be from six and it would be inclusive of that six to positive infinity. We wouldn't even have to worry about this four and then this three and stuff because this would be more restrictive. And this domain would, con um, this here, this restriction on the domain would be contained in this restriction. All right, so you gotta be careful. Make sure that you're looking at each part of the function. Make sure that you're looking at all the cases and always make sure with a rational function, you're finding out when does that denominator equal zero and x can't equal that value. Now the third function, we got f of x equals ln of x minus three over x squared minus four x minus five. So notice we got that ln of x minus three again, which means x minus three has to be greater than zero which means x has to be greater than three. So that's one restriction on this. Notice in this case, x can equal four. It couldn't equal four before because this was in the denominator and an x value of four makes this whole thing zero. But we could take zero and divide it by a number, that would give us zero, but we can't take something and divide it by zero. That would be undefined. So that restriction of x not equaling four wouldn't apply in this case because the ln x minus three is in the numerator this time. So I thought I would mention that. But notice we have another expression in the denominator. x squared minus four x minus five. Remember a denominator cannot equal zero, which means x squared minus four x minus five cannot equal zero. So we could factor this here x minus five x plus one cannot equal zero, which means x minus five cannot equal zero and x plus one cannot equal zero, which means x cannot equal five and x cannot equal negative one. So some additional restrictions coming from this uh, expression in the denominator. However, notice that this x value not equaling negative one Notice that this restriction is already contained within this restriction, right? Because if all the x values have to be greater than three, then we don't even have to worry about x values equaling negative one. So we could forget about that restriction right there because it's already contained with this one. So you gotta be careful. You gotta look for restrictions that contain other restrictions because it wouldn't be correct to say from negative one to it wouldn't be correct to say x equals negative one and then x is greater than three in the same domain right we would just ignore this but you may run, run into a multiple choice that is going to contain this so you got to know to take it out so it's pretty important to know that to look at all the restrictions and see which ones are contained within other ones. Okay, so that restriction we don't have to worry about. However, notice this one we do because even though all the x values have to be greater than three, all the x values can't be five and five is greater than three. So these two, we have to uh, contain both of them in the uh, domain and the restrictions on the domain. And that's pretty much it for the restrictions. So to write the domain in a nice format, we could say x could be anything as long as x is greater than three and x does not equal five. I'm putting in, an, in that uh, other notation, 
we could say x has to be greater than 3, not greater than or equal to 3, just greater than 3, so there's a circle bracket there, all the way to 5. Remember, this we're reading from left to right, so 3 is the minimum value. All the x values have to be greater than 3. And then we're going to reach this 5, can't be equal to 5, and then from 5 to positive infinity. It could be anything. Right, so notice there's this, uh, there's a break here at, um, at this 5. Now, what if, um, let's say we had x plus 1 here, and then let's say this was x minus 1. Right, let's say this was a different quadratic here in the denominator. What would happen then? Well, if this was x minus 1, it would mean x cannot equal 1. And notice that this restriction would be contained within this restriction. So if that happened, then it would just be from 3 to positive infinity. That would be the domain here. Okay, we wouldn't have to worry about these restrictions here. Okay, but because we had that 5, which is greater than 3, we got to consider that when writing the final domain.